What's going on guys? Welcome back to another AVS how-to video. This one's going to be a little bit different because this is a complex topic. We're going to talk about mobility optimized networking. Uh, and my goal here, um, even though it is a pretty lofty goal, is to try to do this in under 15 minutes with an actual demonstration uh, with some logical designs. Um, so let's just dive right into it. So first and foremost, you have to at least understand HCX basics and network extension. We have plenty of videos on the channel. If you haven't done those yet, I would go look at those videos. Otherwise, this won't be super helpful. Um, so let's get started with sort of the logical design what I have set up in the lab. Uh, the, what, what we have here is we have an on-prem environment uh, and we have an AVS environment. Uh, and this uh, right side of the screen uh, represents all of Azure. So you could have other Azure VNets uh, with services and service endpoints uh, that make up your Azure uh, footprint. And what we also have is we've created a service mesh uh, to be able to uh, extend our networks into AVS, which we've done. So we have a 10.129.10.192.27 and a 10.129.10.64.27. Both are extended. Uh, on top of that, in this uh, AVS environment, I have put VMs on those networks. These could be, in a usual situation, migrated VMs, or you can put net new VMs on extended networks, uh, which I have done here. And so now you've got the IP addresses of all these systems um, you know, right in front of you. So what we're trying to avoid is the hairpinning scenario. Uh, so again, if you understand network extension, we still use the default gateway and the default configuration. We don't use any of the gateways in uh, AVS because we follow the same path. And this can be very beneficial for most customers because it blows through the same firewalls, has the same routing, uh, and nothing really changes. The goal really is to migrate as soon as possible. Now, for some customers, that's not possible. Uh, these uh, migrations can take months. Um, you know, it really depends on the scenario. And so if we do have a situation where we do have a ton of hairpinning, we wanna limit that latency as much as possible. And that's where mobility optimized networking comes in. So when you go in and you enable mobility optimized networking, you do it on the extensions and you also have to do it on the virtual machines. And the, the goal is, is that instead of um, having the hairpinning effect, Mon will actually inject slash 32s for every virtual machine that has mobility optimized networking enabled on. And so the end result should be that instead of doing the hairpinning like we saw before, now you have a local routing for, uh, for those mobility optimized VMs. This can also happen for other Azure services. So it's not necessarily just uh, for Azure, uh, AVS VMs, although that's typically the goal is we're trying to optimize routing between virtual machines that are on extended networks. So let's go over how mobility optimized networking works. Let's start with the process of how it goes through its routing phases. So first it will do a layer two ARP uh, and simply transverse IPsec tunnel uh, if it if its uh, destination IP address is on the same subnet. The next step goes into layer three. Uh, and the first thing Mon will do is that it will peer into the tier one gateway in ABS to see if there's a connected route for its destination. If there is a connected route, it will simply use it. Um, so in this case, we have Mon enabled on both these virtual machines, uh, and therefore it finds that connected route. If it peers into uh, the tier one gateway and it does not find a connected route, then it goes into something called policy routes, which we'll talk about more in the future slide. Policy routes is where we tell HCX what to do with that traffic, depending on its destination. And the default setup of Mon will have uh, send to source, meaning send the traffic on-prem for all the RFC 1918 ranges. And so, um, you know, just by default configuration, uh, what will happen is it'll ARP, it'll look for connected routes, and then it'll just send traffic home if you're on private IP addresses. Um, so let's look what it's like, uh, or see what it's like to enable it in the lab and what can happen. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is let's go look at our network extensions and see what I had showed you on the whiteboard is the same in the lab. So as you can see here, I have these two slash 27 networks extended and Mon is disabled. Uh, so it is disabled at this point. So now let's go take a peek in the inventory and look at these virtual machines. Uh, so I've got these WebAmer virtual machines, U1-2 and U2-2. You can see that I have SSH sessions already uh, connected to these Linux boxes and you can see their IP addresses associated with it. I also have another tab open, which is gonna be the vCenter tab for West Europe. Uh, so the West US locations in dark mode, 
and the West Europe locations in light mode. So we can separate the two vCenters and I'll show you the IP addresses for these virtual machines as well. So again, now we have uh, two virtual machines on-prem on two different networks. And then uh, those two networks are extended and we have two virtual machines on the other end of those extensions as well. Now, if I go ahead and start performing pings, where we'll see the largest latency is going to be when we create the hairpinning effect. So if I ping U21, which is on a different network extension than U11, you can see when they ping each other, we're up to almost 300 milliseconds of latency. Uh, so this is showing sort of like the worst case scenario going across the Atlantic uh, to create this tromboning effect. If I were to ping sim simply from uh, West US to West Europe, you can see it's about half that time because it's just simply transversing uh, the express route connection one time instead of twice in that hairpinning scenario. So now let's go over into our network extension screen and let's enable mobility optimized networking. So now we go identify our network extensions and we're gonna go from disabled to enabled and allow it to go through the process of enabling uh, mobility optimized networking. Since this only enables it on the network extension, we have to also go over to the virtual machines and enable mobility optimized networking on the virtual machines. Uh, refer to documentation when mobility optimized networking uh, will and will not be automatically applied depending on what migration type you use. There's very good documentation around that on HCX Docs. So um, in this situation, since they are already there, I have to go manually turn them on for the virtual machines themselves. So now that mobility optimized networking is turned on, it's applying it to the virtual machines on the destination uh, extensions. And lo and behold, uh, we actually have communication dropping from my workstation to these SSH sessions. So what's going on? Uh, this is a perfect example that I wanted to show and often happens to some customers if we didn't plan appropriately. This is not uh, what can happen every time. This is why the planning is so critical. So let's pop back over into the whiteboard. Uh, and this is easily the most critical uh, point of this entire video. The whole game with mobility optimized networking, specifically in AVS, is we need to avoid asymmetrical routes. Um, so I had mentioned that we have slash 32s that are injected into the tier one gateway. But since AVS and Express Route all use BGP, depending on how you be, have BGP configured, those slash 32s could come all the way to your on prem routers and create this asymmetrical um, route, routing effect. Uh, so I had mentioned policy routes before. The default policy routes are shown here. They're all RFC 1918 address ranges. And for this example, this is exa exactly why we had uh, communication drop to our extensions uh, or extended VMs is because we create an asymmetrical route between the policy routes and how these slash 32s were propagated. So let's look at 10.129.10.210. So the slash 32s propagate all the way to your on-prem routers. When it reaches out to 10.129.10.82, which is on another extension on a different network, it's going to reach out to its gateway and it will see these slash 32s and start making the trip uh, like you see here uh, to across the Azure infrastructure and not the extension. But because this 10.129.10.82 and uh, 2.10 are on this 10 slash 8, we are, the default configuration is send a source with HCX, as you see in this green checkbox. Uh, so when it reaches out to 10 to 210, when 82 uh, reaches out to 210, it's going to transverse across the tunnel instead of the other um, way, which would be across the express route. And then that's how we create the asymmetrical route. And most firewalls are going to drop that traffic. Uh, so that's where we've created our asymmetrical route. So the question is, what can I do about these asymmetrical routes? How can I circumvent this and make sure that I have symmetrical routing and I can use mobility optimized networking? Um, a common solution for this is to filter out the routes at the tier one gateway in ABS. That way it does not propagate, but you don't have to do it there. Uh, and that can circumvent your end goal. 
So if your end goal is to actually optimize routing, just not just for the AVS VMs, but for the Azure VMs, then maybe you want to filter out those routes from your on-prem router. Uh, but in this example, what I'm going to do, and this is a common uh, scenario for customers, is I just want mobility optimized networking to work within AVS only, not necessarily across the other Azure resources, but definitely just within AVS. And an easy way to accomplish that is to go filter out the routes at the tier one gateway level so that those slash 32s stay there and don't propagate anywhere else. So let's look at what it takes to do that. So what we need to do is go log into our destination environment. And in this case, it's West Europe. And we're going to log into the NSXT interface for West Europe. Uh, now I look at my segments. I want to verify what tier one gateway it's connected to. It looks like it's the default tier one gateway that's created with ABS. And I'm going to go find that tier one gateway. And let's just confirm the slash 32s are in that tier one gateway like we talked about in the whiteboard. You can see here, here's our uh, 199 and uh, 82. Those are our two virtual machines uh, that we've enabled mobility optimized networking. And these are the two virtual machines we're having trouble connecting to now that we have it enabled. So now our goal is we need to go create route filters to, to filter out the slash 32 so that it's not propagating throughout our network and creating this asymmetrical route. So this is fairly simple. We go and click edit and we're gonna set route advertisement rule. Click add route advertisement rule, give it a name and enter its IP address. In this example, since I only have two virtual machines, I'm gonna do the specific IP addresses. You could do this on larger subnets, uh, depending on the scenario that you're looking at. Make sure to click Save so that it takes effect. And now you can see I'm going to log in to these virtual machines. Uh, since we've cleared up the asymmetrical routing, we have symmetrical routing, and I'm able to get my SSH sessions going again. And then on top of that, what I'm going to do is go ahead and ping the other virtual machine that's in the same AVS infrastructure across layer two extension and confirm that we're now using mobility optimized networking and no longer using uh, tromboning across the layer two extensions. And now you can see before our pings were around two, 200 to 300 milliseconds, and now we're down to a bit basically a millisecond. So that wraps it up for this video. <clears throat> There's still more topics we didn't even cover in this 15 minutes. For example, we didn't talk about internet egress and ingress with the default RFC 1918 address ranges that will not include internet uh, to send back on-prem. So you may have to do a quad zero route to make sure uh, that you have your internet ingress and egress happen how you want it to. If you wanted to bring it back on-prem, maybe you want to have it happen in Azure and the default would be fine. Uh, but that covers the topic. We were able to squeeze it in 15 minutes. Appreciate you guys watching. If you have an idea for a video, please leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks guys. Thank you.